what's up everybody JTW here with the video guide for Neptune 3. So to kick things off let's talk about the different components of Neptune uh, beginning with the NTS flag system which you see here showing bullish buying pressure and rolled over here to bearish selling pressure. Each of these levels in the Neptune flag represent higher degrees of buying pressure until you hit the key buying pressure point here on this bullish flag. And then very similarly for the bearish flag, these are levels of selling pressure increasing as you move up into this bearish flag until you hit the key selling pressure point. Going along in this key buying pressure area or short in this key selling pressure area, can result in some great entries uh, from Neptune. Especially in this scenario where you have a confluence with the 333 SMA acting as resistance just overhead and in that key selling pressure area, great Neptune setup right there. Next, I want to talk about the higher time frame flag, uh, which you can see here and here. Currently, this is set to the 90 minute time frame, which is the default setting. Uh, and it can be used very similarly to the chart time frame flag, where we look at this higher time frame flag as areas of buying pressure getting stronger as we move deeper into the flag there, and areas of selling pressure as we move deeper into the flag as resistance there. You can change the time frame of this higher time frame flag to any interval you'd like to set it to as long as it is longer or higher than the chart time frame. So in this case, we're on the 15 minute. I can set this to any time frame higher than 15 minutes and it will plot. Ways you might use this higher time frame flag would be if you're in a scenario where the chart time frame setup says go short and you're playing short to the downside. Again, very similarly, as we talked about a confluence of resistance over here, we have a confluence of support here with the 200 SMA inside the first level of buying pressure here on the higher time frame flag that would be a good spot to look to take profit if i'm playing down short from up here now it's only effective for these purposes when the flags are in disagreement with each other outside of that in the scenario where your chart time frame flag like you see here and the higher interval flag are both bearish that just adds confluence to the overall scenario that we should be short on Amazon after that point until things change. Next, I'm going to talk about the uh, Trend Ribbon, which is the newest addition to the Neptune trading system. Here you see the bullish Trend Ribbon pushing us to the upside. Here you see a bearish Trend Ribbon pushing us to the downside. This Trend Ribbon behaves very similarly to how the uh, flag system works, where we expect to find more and more buying pressure as we move deeper into the ribbon until we hit that key buying pressure point. As you can see where this candle nailed right off of it, shot the price action upward. Same thing here, similar to the bearish flag, bearish trend ribbon. As we push higher into the trend ribbon, we expect to find rejections moving the price action to the downside. Some examples for how you would use the trend ribbon along with the flag system that we just talked about. Here we see a great example of the price action dipping down again into that key buying pressure point on the trend ribbon in buying pressure on the Neptune flag pushes things to the upside right there. Here we see the price break down below, flip this flag to the upside. Now we're removed from the flag as far as it having additional selling pressure up here. But we're also, by the time we roll this over on this candle right here, we're pretty far removed from the trend ribbon as well. So in these scenarios, what I like to do is wait for that back test of some of that selling pressure before I take my entry and then continue to ride the price action on down from there. Now let's talk about the Neptune signals, which you can see here, short, long, short, long again. It is very important not to follow uh, these signals blindly or by themselves. As you can see here, we get this short signal on this candle. The issue I have with that short signal 
is we are right there at the key buying pressure point on the flag system. For me, this is a short signal that I would ignore versus this long signal where you see we have bounced out of the key buying pressure from the flag. We're now over the moving averages. The trend ribbon is pushing to the upside and bullish. When I see a long signal like that, that adds additional confirmation for me to look for an entry on Amazon to the upside as soon as I can possibly get one. Over here, we see a similar scenario. Uh, I just mentioned this a moment ago where we have this short signal on this candle that flips the flag over to the bearish side. So in that case, we've got that short signal. We would wait for this pullback, then we get in, use that short signal, bearish trend ribbon, bearish flag to play for the downside. Here's an example of a long signal where we are in selling pressure and pushing up into it. This long signal, again, is one that I would ignore. I always want to have the other components of Neptune working in my favor whenever I see these long and short signals, or I'd like to be very far removed from any buying or selling pressure if I'm going to play a signal opposite the flag and ribbon system. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the moving averages here in Neptune. Uh, these are fully customizable by default. I only have two of them turned on uh, and I have them set to the 200 uh, SMA here, this blue line, and the 333 SMA here, this red line. I like to use these to find confluences like we've already talked about a couple of times where I've got these moving averages acting as dynamic support here inside the buying pressure of the flag uh, or as dynamic resistance with that selling pressure uh, of the flag of Neptune right there. And as I said, uh, these are totally customizable. So if you get into the settings of Neptune here, uh, you'll see that you can choose really any type uh, or calculation of moving average you want, uh, as well as just about any source uh, for the moving average price points. And of course, the length uh, is fully customizable as well. Last but certainly not least is the NTS dashboard you see down here in the lower left-hand corner. This you can set to see what the last or current status is on any time frame higher than the chart time frame. So very similar to higher time frame flag. Anything on the dashboard also needs to be set to a higher time frame than the chart time frame. And we can keep an eye on whether or not on these other time frames our last signal is long and whether or not the current status of the flag is bullish or bearish. It also allows us to see uh, the current value for uh, RSI. And with that, we have now covered all of the major components of the Neptune trading system. So now that we've covered the components of Neptune, I want to talk a little bit about ideal trade setups. And there's one that you've probably been staring at throughout the entirety of this video guide. Uh, with regards to this long setup on Amazon here. Uh, again, as you can see, we are finding support or we expect to find support down here at the key buying pressure level and point, specifically in this scenario of the Neptune flag. Uh, going into pre-market on this trading day, uh, we are now over the SMAs. We've gapped up over those. We've flipped the ribbon, bullish, and we're getting a long signal pre-market. Now, as we go into the trading day, you see the price starts to get a little bit overextended away from the ribbon. And then shortly after open, we get that pull back into this sweet spot where you've got buying pressure on the flag and the key buying pressure point on the ribbon. Once you start to see this price action bounce off of that, that is your entry opportunity. Now, I'm sure you're looking at this and saying, well, that's easy to say in hindsight. Anybody can figure out trades looking backwards. But as you can see from this screenshot, I use that exact setup to alert Amazon zero day lotto calls to our trading group at X trades with an entry price of 14 cents per contract, which in the world of options equals $14 and a close the day price of $204. At one point during the day, these contracts almost hit 20 times their initial buy value. Now, of course, in this particular scenario, we were getting in just before a parabolic move, which should not be the expectation. And we were also playing zero day contracts. So the percent gain was really high, but it was also high risk, 
high reward, which is why I was alerted as a lotto. Again, 20x returns should not be the expectation. This is just an example of what happens when you execute the right setup at the right moment. Now that we have the basics covered, let's go through a few more examples of how to utilize Neptune to enhance your trading. So before I start stepping us forward into this trading day, let's kind of talk about where things are sitting here pre-market. Uh, we see Tesla uh, is most recently under a short signal. Uh, we've broken down below this bullish flag just barely, um, but uh, overall by this point, I would say that's enough to say that's a pretty confirmed break. Sometimes you can get these very weak breaks of the flag. I'd be careful about putting too much weight into a trade like that. You want to see a little bit more confirmation, a little bit further and continuation below uh, the break or the flip of the flag. But overall, again, we do kind of see that playing out more so down here. However, we do have the 200 above the 333, so slightly bullish from an SMA standpoint, but short signal, bearish ribbon, uh, bearish chart interval flag here on the five minute, a higher time frame flag on the 90 minute also bearish. So really kind of overall, this is a really bearish leaning setup. Uh, just only things really in favor of the bulls are these SMAs right here. So let's start walking this thing forward uh, and we'll talk through things. So uh, we are still here pre-market. We are getting a candle closing below the 333, however. Uh, so now we're starting to look for a potential bearish entry, however, I'd be very careful, uh, me personally at least, I don't like to chase trades going right into the open. I like to give things a few minutes to settle and shake out and really try to catch uh, maybe uh, some kind of a really good back test after I've had a sense of what the market's going to do directionally. Uh, but to each their own, I really do want to treat this as if every minute of the trading day is actionable. So we'll continue to walk through it with that in mind. But again, generally speaking, we're getting a little bit far removed from where our selling pressures are uh, and just barely breaking below the 333. So really kind of don't want to jump uh, too quickly and chase this in my personal opinion. So let's again, continue to walk this thing forward. All right, now we're at the open. We've got a big candle down. Again, I just said a moment ago, personally, I'm not a big fan of chasing things, especially right at the open. I would not be chasing puts at this point. So we'll continue to watch this play out. All right, so now we see uh, some buying candles coming in. Now we're getting to the point where we're seeing some direction, right? We've got the bearish setup overall. We're rejecting those SMAs that we were holding as support here pre-market. This is starting to set up for a nice bearish trade on a back test of some of this resistance right here. Now that is probably a really good entry here. Um, certainly one I would take eight and a half times out of 10. I don't see really anything bullish about this and we're running right back up into that selling pressure. Um, so we're gonna see how this continues to play out. All right, we're starting to see a little bit of a rejection but definitely not enough to really take any profit on there. Pushing down, pushing down. Okay, really quick fake out move to the upside. Uh, now I'm kind of thinking about, okay, I've got the pre-market low here. If we can get back to that, that would probably be a good profit taking opportunity. I'm also looking at, well, I've got the 200 and really, again, a strong confluence. We'll zoom in on this a little bit more from a Neptune perspective. Bearish flag at that highest key selling pressure point, heavy selling pressure here on the ribbon. So again, I'm looking at maybe even potentially adding to this entry. Uh, because that's looking like a really good spot to uh, catch an additional re uh, rejection. And if it flips back to the upside, probably just exit the trade, take a stop. There's nothing wrong with that. Nobody's 100% when it comes to their win rate and trading. So let's see how this plays out. All right, so now we're pushing back down below, back above. All right, there we go. We get a nice test of exactly what we were looking for. Maybe that would have been a good spot to add, like I just said. And now we're getting that rejection back down. Remember... Again, support and resistance, having targets, having something in mind beyond just trying to maximize every single trade is important. I would certainly be scaling out for profit and moving my stops up uh, to you know break even or somewhere in profit. Uh, if we're getting down back to this pre-market low, we've clearly found support there already. And it moved us from 191.44 all the way up to this rejection up here at 195.35. So you don't wanna get caught being greedy uh, knowing that you've already seen a bounce off that level. 
and things continue to push down, play out, boom, nailed our level right there at that early morning low. That would have been a great opportunity to get out. And now again, you're moving your stops up to where worst case, the, the remainder of your positions, whether those be uh, shares that you've shorted or put positions uh, are going to stop out at break even at the very worst at this point. Make sure you are moving those stops up. Do not be greedy. Let's see how this continues to play out. Okay, now we're starting to look like a potential re-entry for puts. I certainly wouldn't be against it here at this point. Definitely looking for a put re-entry somewhere in this neighborhood. We are starting to flip things to the long side, but I would certainly say be willing to take puts somewhere right in here. Um, we haven't gotten a long signal yet. We're just barely flipping that ribbon, but things have started to trend to the upside. And this is something important to notice about the ribbon. Even though it's overall bearish, you notice that the bottom of this ribbon, even though it's showing bearish, is starting to catch support here. So that would be something that I would say, okay, maybe if I'm going to try this, I'm going to start off small and make sure that we confirm back down below that ribbon before I really add to that position and keep a tight stop on it. We've got an additional confluence up here with this heaviest selling pressure on Neptune and the 200 SMA right there. We get back above that. I'm not going to be too much interested in, uh, or interested in too much more downside, I should say, uh, especially with that long signal sitting right here. Now I'm starting to get a little bit skeptical, but again, definitely this is overall really not a bad place to look to start to add puts, even though this may not work out in our favor based on what we just talked about with the ribbon right here. So let's continue on. Okay. Looking favorable, maybe not. Let's see. Okay. Well, again, we talked about sort of that weak break earlier. That's not a really strong break just yet. I would probably still be holding this put position if you're getting a little bit too nervous about the trade, which again, don't let your emotions get too much in your trading, but we are starting to see this flag, or the sorry, the ribbon uh, flip back over to the bullish side coming into that buying pressure long signal there are good reasons technical reasons on the chart to be skeptical about whether or not this put entry that we talked about right there is actually going to work out uh, and again we would make sure that we are getting into that trade sizing accordingly based on some of these other factors that we just talked about so again starting off small with this potential put rejection uh, coming back into this buying pressure but finding support right and sort of starting to flip this flag but we're not quite there yet all right so let's keep going maybe you're starting to uh, i'm sorry the one thing i meant to mention is maybe you're starting to think about just taking like a break even exit here totally understandable but again overall i still don't totally believe that this isn't going to pull back down interesting print above okay now we get a big candle close above this is definitely a stop out uh if this candle closes up here which it did uh, and now we're starting to pull back and back test. So now we're seeing a potential call upside entry here um, and stopping out on that put trade, which is totally fine. Again, nobody's 100%. And now we're starting to see these candles come back and test our buying pressure confluence. And now we're starting to look up here, right, for uh, places where we're going to take profit using that higher time frame flag. So let's keep walking this forward, keep walking this forward. Okay, a little bit of a pullback, but again, overall pulling back right into the buying pressure and it's getting picked back up, pushing up. So like I said, now we're starting to look at call entries up in this range and starting to think about these as profit taking targets. And yeah, we got right up into that. Sorry, I didn't notice it, but we got right up into that uh, selling pressure right there. That's definitely a spot where I would start scaling out and again, moving my stops up. A worst case break even uh, or at least taking a little bit of profit or right using the flip of this ribbon if we do as a means to take out the rest of those contracts okay now we're starting to flip it back around so entry back down here or here finishing taking your contracts there while taking some profits there overall not too bad again these are all just day trades that we're walking through right now so let's keep pushing forward and I'd say, again, we're now all out. We're not in any positions, in my personal opinion, or the way that I'm looking at this chart right now. Mm, okay, now we're flipping things back bullish. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, it's getting close to late in the day. I probably, if again, if I'm just looking for day trades and we're getting into this selling pressure up here, I'm probably done for the trading day at this point. Yeah, we're done. So that's uh, as best as I can do walking you guys through a trading day using Neptune here on Tesla with the five minute chart. You've already heard me say in this video that Neptune is meant to enhance your trading. I say that because I think it's important to understand that we never want to use any indicator as the solitary means for making our trading decisions. Even one as good as Neptune. So now I'm going to show you how I use Neptune along with what I like to call the daily spy plan to execute day trades with an extreme level of accuracy regardless of whether the market chooses to trend to the upside or trend to the downside. So before we begin running the replay, in case you didn't catch it in that screenshot I just showed you, I'm going to walk you through exactly what this plan is showing us as we head into this particular trading day. So we have a call side trade plan here, which we're looking to take calls if SPY gets a confirmed break above 512.56 with price targets at 513.30, 51376 and 51412 with a stop loss average down at 51213. If spy happens to break to the downside, we're looking to take puts on a confirmed break below 51138 with targets at 51050, 51016, 50951 with a stop loss average down here at 51186. So with that out of the way, let's dig into this replay. So let's start stepping through this trading day. Here we head into the open. We see the price action pushing up. Now this is an interesting spot right here. As we test this confluence of resistance, we are getting above the ribbon and we're starting to see the ribbon probably getting ready to flip bullish here any moment now, getting bounces off the bottom of that ribbon. We're already talked about that earlier in this uh, video. Uh, and, but we are seeing a rejection right where we would expect to see it. We've got a nice confluence right there with this call entry level. That's a key resistance and right at the key uh, selling pressure here on the Neptune flag. <clears throat> so let's keep pushing this thing forward. Again, really not, you know, not, nothing to, to see here so far, right? No actual trade entries, nothing confirmed yet. Interesting now we've got a long signal. We're getting a bullish ribbon, but still have yet to flip that bearish flag. Now we see the price action starting to fight above. We flip the flag bullish. We've got the 200 SMA coming up underneath, probably getting ready to add some confluence of support here to our stop loss average down if it continues uh, to uh, trend in this direction. And we do have what I would call a confirmed break. This looks like a good upside entry for me. We've got a closed candle above, a little bit of a back test and push higher. I like that for an entry. So I would say at this point, we should consider ourselves as in calls. A little bit of a retracement into the ribbon there. Now we get to an interesting spot with the 200 SMA, stop loss average down, bullish flag, nice confluence there. That is a fantastic spot to add to your position if you don't get the full push up to the first price target as far as Neptune and the daily spy plan goes. So let's continue on. Now we see back above the call entry level after adding to our position down there. Now we're getting very close to price target one. A little fade below the ribbon there, but overall coming right back to this, again, confluence with the 200 SMA, finding that support in the bullish flag. So we're still holding strong on this. Haven't really gotten anywhere close to threatening the stop loss average down level again. So again, we took an entry here on this particular candle, here on this candle. This may have been close enough to think about taking some profit, but I'm going to say we really need to hit these levels for this particular demonstration before we start taking any money out. So uh, we're still holding strong on these call contracts. Now we're continuing to find support above and push above that call entry level after getting yet another bounce off that confluence we just discussed. And then we have this really wild candle here, pushes all the way up from just below PT1 pretty much to PT3. And again, finding a high a day resistance near a level that's never been tested, but we called pre-market before SPY got anywhere close to this level. So we'll keep pushing forward. There's our really clean rejection of PT3. So we're out, right? We're fully out of calls now at this point. Our job here is done and we've nailed 
the new all-time high on SPY at this point before it had ever been tested. But let's just watch how the day wraps up. You get a couple of prints above there, uh, so slightly higher, but again, calling that new all-time high before SPY ever got there pre-market. That's fantastic. Here you see a quick bounce. Again, bottom of the bullish flag. That candle comes all the way down near that confluence with the bottom of the bullish flag, 200 SMA, call entry level. That could be a quick scalp, pretty close back up to PT1, just on that one little wick right there using Neptune. But then we ultimately do get a break below. Flip things, bearish, right? So now we've got a short signal, bearish ribbon, bearish flag. Things aren't looking so hot. However, we are now hitting close of the trading day at this point, although SPY does trade for 15 minutes after, so let's at least take it that far. And there you have it. That is a full trading day using Neptune along with the daily SPY plan. I hope you like what you saw. So one of the questions I get most frequently about Neptune is, does it only work for stocks? The answer to that is an unequivocal no. As you can see, we're currently looking at a crypto asset. In this particular case, uh, we're looking at Bitcoin here on the 15 minute chart. And we've got a fantastic entry opportunity with a quadruple confluence of on Neptune that has moved us from about 62,000 on Bitcoin uh, up almost to 69,000 uh, without ever really uh, threatening to flip over this bullish trend uh, back to the downside. So why is this the ideal entry opportunity? Well, we've got our long signal here, but that's our that's not a no that's a no go, right? That's not a uh, an entry yet because we're still under this bearish flag right in the heart of that selling pressure. However, the candle right after that, we get a close above which flips that bullish. So now we've got bullish flag. We were already within this bullish ribbon. We've got the long signal and we've got both SMAs lined up perfectly on top of each other with the price action coming down and testing that quadruple confluence that I've pointed out here. And from there, we just keep bouncing out of that key buy zone on the ribbon the whole way up. We get one little dip below the ribbon there, but right into the buying pressure of the flag, which picks us back up and keeps us moving to the upside. So all of these are entry opportunities. If you miss this, as you come and test this ribbon on a, uh, the bottom of this ribbon on a full bullish setup, those are great entry opportunities. As you can see, I'm currently up $500 and some change on this uh, paper trading contest that TradingView is currently running, uh, where Bitcoin is one of the assets that you're allowed to trade. You're only allowed to trade one coin at a time, otherwise I would have more. Uh, but overall, this challenge account, or I should say, uh, paper trading challenge account uh, is going quite well. Uh, and we're only just a few days into it, all by using Neptune to trade these Bitcoin entries. And here you see Neptune with futures uh, pushing up out of the uh, bullish flag here, but a little bit of a challenge area here, I would say, between those two SMAs with the 200 being below the 333. Again, we always want to take everything into account, but I think once you get over that 200, there is a nice ride up to the 333. This is probably the best entry I see uh, from that whole move up right there until we get over the 333 start to establish it as support and bounce off of it and move up with the ribbon there with some good entry opportunities with everything being fully bullish in there for some swing trades. Uh, we see a breakdown of the ribbon. Price action starts to follow it down until where do we hit that key buying pressure point here on uh, Neptune, the bullish flag. It bounces us up. We get a move a little bit higher uh, as far as making some higher highs for a little bit there. Uh, and then we break down below the flag we see some continuation to the downside using that ribbon. Does eventually hold the 200 SMA. And we've pretty much been full bullish from that point with some really solid entry opportunities, especially here, uh, here, and here, uh, using the ribbon in that full bullish setup. Like I said, stocks, futures, crypto, uh, if you can pull up uh, a chart for it in TradingView and it's a tradable asset, more than likely, uh, Neptune will work. All right, so to close out this video guide, let's talk a little bit about settings and alerts. So to open up the settings uh, for Neptune, you're gonna hover over the indicator name up here, top left-hand corner of your trading view screen. 
you'll click the settings icon which will pop up all the settings for Neptune. I'm going to move these over here just so you can kind of see how they affect what's going on on the chart. So here we currently have the 15 minute chart uh, for Disney <clears throat> and we have pretty much everything turned on with the default settings. So NTS factor six. Uh, so what this does is this actually changes uh, how closely the flags will trace the price action. So the default setting is six, but you can certainly ratchet that down. For example, if I drop it down to a four, right, you'll see these flags flip over a little bit sooner. They'll try to find uh, support and resistances, as you see here, top of these flags right there. Uh, there's maybe a decent support test in another one there, even though we're on the four setting. It will still try to hunt those down. It's just going to be a little bit different. Again, overall, uh, I seem to find best results with my personal trading style uh, using the, the default factor of six. Uh, but by all means, customize these settings. I built Neptune to be uh, really customizable. So, you know, if you find a combination of settings that works best for you, use them. And if you'd like, feel free to share those with me. I'm certainly happy to, to create uh, a log or something that tracks uh, user submitted uh, Neptune setups. So with that being said, uh, you can adjust this factor around. Again, that will change the chart time frame flag as well as the higher time frame flag uh, so be aware of that uh, i have had people reach out to me uh, who've said they uh, use smaller time frames they drop the setting down to three uh, and they use that to scalp just based on when the chart time frame flag is flipping over um, so again like i said all different kinds of ways that you can use neptune um, that i want you to be kind of aware of and and feel open to play with uh, so uh, higher time frame again we can turn this on or off as far as seeing that higher time frame flag on the chart this will also let us change what uh, time frame the higher time frame flag is displaying and to show some of these time frames like the 90 minute time frame you may need to create a custom time frame for the 90 minute in trading view uh, so to do that you drop down here your chart time frames you go all the way to the bottom and here's where you can create custom time frames that aren't pre-built into trading view uh, as you can see i've created the 24 hour uh, the 90 minute things of that nature so uh, anything that you have listed in this drop down of time frames uh, as far as minutes go should be available uh, to use you minutes and hours and days i should say uh, should be available for you to use uh, in neptune so uh, there's uh, the Neptune higher time frame flag settings right there. Uh, here's where you can turn the ribbon on or off. Really no settings to play with, with uh, within the ribbon. Uh, it's pretty much a do you want to see it or do you not. I certainly recommend leaving it on for uh, all the reasons that we've covered already in this video. Here you can change uh, how these signals calculate. Uh, whether you want to use uh, standard, which is the si which are the signals and how they've been calculated for Neptune um, for, for quite some time now. Uh, however, I have also added uh, a turbo setting for now. Uh, I'm considering adding more settings, but regardless of if more setting types get added, um, you know, the, the principles are still going to be the same, right? We're always going to be accounting for the entirety of what we're seeing on the chart with Neptune before we're making these trading decisions, which will really help us gauge how good a setup is, how risky uh, it therefore is how we should size our trades and how long we uh, should probably expect to hold them in some, some cases when we have conflicting signals on the chart. So uh, again, you can switch between standard and turbo. Turbo is definitely more uh, sensitive. Uh, you can also sometimes get signals that will, will reverse themselves very quickly. Like you see here with this short right down into the bullish flag though on the chart time frame for Neptune. So not a great short signal immediately fires off long shortly thereafter. Um, so that can happen because of the higher sensitivity level of these signals. So they will fire more frequently. Be aware of that. Um, you know, they may not be as indicative of a longer term trend the way the standard signals are in Neptune. So again, be just aware of that. Uh, I think everybody probably knows how to modify moving average settings. So I'm not going to get into that. Uh, and then last but not least down here in the dashboard, uh, you can turn it either on or off by clicking uh, this show. Uh, signal here and then here's where you can set your time frames that you want to see you know what is the current status uh, of the signal uh, or the most recent signal that fired I should say what is that is it long or short that's technically the current signal uh, and then whether or not the current state of the flag is bearish or bullish on any of these higher time frames this really kind of just maybe lets you gauge okay even on some time frames that I don't see here on the chart you know what's the overall sentiment how should I be feeling about how 
uh, bullish Disney is right now. And, and overall, it sounds like it's got some medium term struggles possibly, but overall we should be finding support on higher time frames. Uh, and you can of course pull those time frames up on the chart uh, and Neptune will adjust accordingly uh, and show you exactly why you're getting these signals on this dashboard. Uh, so with that, uh, we also have the style settings. And here's where you can get uh, into you know any combination of colors you'd like to use, what do you wanna turn on or off. Uh, again, we have the ability to, for instance, to turn this third moving average on or off if you'd like. Um, so again, feel free to play with these colors and these settings all you want. Um, here are the uh, chart time frame flag zones, the NTS zones, the higher time frame flag zones, one, two, and three, whether we are bullish or bearish, uh, and then the trend ribbon zones, which are just one and two. So again, feel free to play with these uh, and make your charts look exactly the way you want them to. So let's talk a little bit about setting alerts with Neptune, which is a really, I think, powerful part of this indicator, uh, the way we have these alerts set up, um, because it can allow you to keep eyes on a ticker that you're not currently watching on the chart just by setting up uh, a few uh, simple alerts with Neptune. Um, and in some cases, uh, in the case of any alert, just a single alert to capture all alerts. So one of the key things to keep in mind uh, before you set your alerts is what is the chart time frame set to and also whether or not you're set to extended trading hours or regular trading hours because this is going to determine uh, again what signals are going to be used for firing the alerts and also you know how long it takes for a candle to close and how frequently your alerts might trigger based on what your chart time frame is so keep that in mind again as well as whether or not you're using extended trading hours or regular trading hours but with that let's dig into setting some alerts with neptune Otherwise, again, you can select from these individual alert types. So bearish flag will let you know whenever uh, the chart time frame flag flips from bullish to bearish. So you'd be getting a signal on that right here on this 15 minute chart. Once that 15 minute candle closes below, that flag flips over. That's when you would get that alert. You cannot get flag uh, shifts on the higher time frame flag. So please keep that in mind. Uh, and very similar for bearish flag, we also have the opposite signal here, the bullish flag. So again, when does the chart time frame flag flip from uh, bearish to bullish? We can kind of see it peeking out down uh, below here. We would get a signal right around here is when that alert would fire uh, if we're setting it on the candle closing the any alert function call. Bearish trend, again, just like uh, the flag flips, this is for the trend ribbon if it's flipping uh, bullish to bearish. Uh, and of course, bullish trend, this is the trend ribbon flipping bearish to bullish. Bounce zone is when the price action moves within a certain uh, range of the flag. 
it will start to fire buy zone alerts, letting you know that uh, the price action is coming into a range where you might expect to see buyers uh, show up based on what your settings for Neptune are and what your chart time frame is, of course. Uh, and same thing for rejection zone. Um, you know, your, your bounce zone uh, is that buy zone. Your rejection zone uh, is a rejection zone where if the price action moves up into the higher areas of this flag, it's going to start to fire off signals letting you know, hey, this is going to potentially pull back. But keep an eye on it, right? You're just getting into that area of a high probability of rejection, high probability of a bounce uh, as far as how the Neptune indicator works. And then last but not least, of course, our long and short signals. And again, these are only truly established once the candle closes. Once the candle closes, that alert is set. It will be there um, on the chart. If you go and do any kind of historical look back or uh, replay, uh, these, these signals and the key functionality of Neptune uh, does not repaint. So with that, I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial video on the Neptune trading system. Should you ever have any questions, please feel free to email me at ntsindicator at gmail.com.